Good everybody. Uh, we're going to start off at this time with our opening hymn.
think that's everything I have. Oh, no, we have one more. Tomorrow after evening, I would say, 7 p.m., we have the Stephen Leonard Group as a concert here, and the Sacred Jazz of Old and New Hymns. And it's, it's free, donation only, but free. And you can come and listen to that. It'd be great. It'd be great to some great music right here in the sanctuary. With that, please stand as we start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. Heavenly Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he gives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained and servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways.
Old Testament reading it comes out of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes out of Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of the men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes his honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So, also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but all was appointed by him who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, after the order of Mezekiah. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered us prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Being designated by God a high priest after the order of Mesodesic. This is the word of the Lord. These rocks. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Jesus said, As Moses. Moses lifted no, from Mark 10, sorry. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was about to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days he will rise. And James and John, the son of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one on your right hand, and one on your left, in your glory. And he said to them, Do you know what you are asking? Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and will, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. 
but it shall not be so among you. For whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Judah 
and the city of Jerusalem to turn from their evil ways. They did not turn from their evil ways. Believe it or not, they were even sacrificing their own babies to false gods. They broke the covenant that God made with them, God's law. Eventually, God raised up the Babylonians to conquer Judah and the surrounding kingdoms because of their sinful ways. He also punished the Babylonians afterward for their sinful ways. All this sin started with the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden. God had a relationship with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden before they sinned. God would personally visit them in the Garden since their sin and the fall of mankind. He has worked to bring mankind back from their rebellion against him, which he in no way caused. When God made a covenant or renewed one in the time of the Old Testament, he did it for this reason. He did it to establish a relationship with mankind and his chosen people. And he would make a statement like the one I'm going to say in a minute here uh, as part of the covenant. It was like this. I shall be their God, and they shall be my people. God used this type of words four times that I know of prior to the text for today. Once to Abraham, second to Moses at Mount Sinai, and then two more in the book of Jeremiah before we even get to our text. Which brings us to our text for today. In our text, God promised a future new covenant. A covenant not like the old one or any of the renewed ones previously made. The ones that people have been following. It would be a totally brand new one. So let's look at the statements of the new covenant that he uh, give, gives us in Jeremiah. First, it will be for the houses of Israel and Judah. He will forgive the sins of his people and remember them no more. He himself will write the law on their hearts. No one will have to teach or tell others to know the Lord. All will know him. And he will be their God, and they shall be his people. So let me take each one of these and see if I can share to see how they would affect you and me today. First, the covenant is for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Both are offspring of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I think St. Paul gives us our connection to the New Covenant in this, his letter to the Romans, and it goes like this. Abraham was fully convinced that God was able to do as he promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words that was counted to him were not written for his sake only, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our, trans our trespasses and raised for our justification. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It is faith in what God's Son has done for us on the cross that saves us from eternal damnation. Faith also makes us His people, just like the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We are included. Jesus won this for us with His sacrifice on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And because of Jesus, God the Father remembers our sin no more. Jesus brings us the new covenant. He is the new covenant. Let's continue to look at the text. What if we consider God's statement that he will write his law on our hearts? Does this mean he's going to write the Ten Commandments on our hearts? Well, I think this is true in a way, but let me explain my thoughts on it. I think it's a reference to the great commandment. Jesus quoted it in the book of Matthew, and he took it 
from when the Ten Commandments were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. And here it's recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And Jesus said it this way in the book of Matthew. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So we have love. Love fulfills the law. Love is being written on our hearts as we live here on earth. We have this through our baptism. John the Baptist said this about baptism from the book of Mark. After me comes one who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that we were baptized with that is writing this love on our hearts. But because we still sin, this love is incomplete. It was the Holy Spirit that has worked faith in our hearts through God's word and faith in his promises, the forgiveness of sins and eternal life, one for us by Jesus. The Holy Spirit also helps us though, overcome and conquer sin in our lives. But yet, we are saved by faith. Now because of sin, we don't always love God, do we? And we don't always love our neighbors, do we? St. John told us about God's love in his letter to the churches. It goes like this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. So we have times when we see God as we ourselves love. And then we blow it when we don't love. We don't see God completely because of our sin. St. Paul gives us something about this as he writes about seeing God in this verse. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then, face to face, now I know in part, but then I will know fully, even as I have fully known. So a quick review from Paul. So we, now we have faith, hope, and love, the abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Because we heard Paul, he alluded to a time when we would know God, who is love fully. When will that be? My friends in Christ, that will be when Jesus comes again and all sin will go away. It will be God's completed new covenant. This from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of God is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people and he himself will be with them as their God he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. If we go just a few more verses, God finishes it for us with this. The one who conquers will have his heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. At this time, please rise as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles.
be seated for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in these Lenten days we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit upon us to write your word on our heart that we might know you as the God who forgives our iniquities and remembers our sins no more. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, bless and sustain Matthew, our synod and president, Gregory, our district president, and Paul, our circuit visitor, and our pastors, who, like us, are beset with weaknesses. Grant that they may deal gently with us and keep them faithful in proclaiming your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son came not to be served, but to serve. Help us to not lord our authority over one another, but humbly serve one another to our home, community, and congregation, as Christ has so humbly served us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, Look in mercy on all those to whom you have given earthly authority. Guard them from the temptation to lord it over us in power, that they might faithfully serve according to your good and precious will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you watch over, protect, and defend us through the service of others. Bless the men and women who serve in our military, police forces, and all emergency services who like your son, are often called to lay down their lives for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, as your only begotten son learned obedience through what he suffered, we pray that you would bless and sustain and relieve Julie, Barbara, Steve, Lori, Carl, Jenny, Captain Paul, Susan, Gary, Adrian, Mike, Terry, Keith, Joe, Chris, Frank, Mary, Denise, Glenn, Lorraine, Laura, Kenya, Laura, Catherine, Maureen, Barbara, Anita, George, Liani, Ed, Kelvin, Donald, Derek, Glenn and Margaret and Lord bring peace and comfort to the family of Charlotte Emmert and all who suffer in our midst that walking the way of the Christ with your son that we know the fullness of his eternal salvation Lord in your mercy Amen. Heavenly Father you have baptized us with Christ's baptism to be our God that we might be your people grant us to be faith, to faithfully drink from his cup, to be in the blessed and this blessed sacrament, that he might sustain our life with his flesh and blood. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. This time we would normally do our, uh, our offering. Um, our offering plates are up at the front here so that when we come up for communion, we get to uh, use the, the plates there and put it in front of us. And with that, let's uh, all rise.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying,